Oh, welcome. I'm the first official episode. Yeah, I've done a couple trials, but this is the first oh, official Jesus. episode. Jesus, and we're talking about cigarettes and Chick-fil-A. For your first one, girl, really? You chose my ass? Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Man Eater Podcast. I'm your host, MJ, and I'm joined here today with Brendan. Brendan had a viral moment in 2015 when he was caught deeping down on camera on a live broadcasting network. And then ever since then, you have been a viral sensation. Right. And we love that for you. I describe you as a postmodern Lynchian icon. Wait, that's a huge compliment. It is. Well, here's the thing. It is a huge compliment. Oh, my God. To be described as postmodern. That is sexy. I love your videos. I Thank love you. It's very much like my... I never thought I would be a professional meme, but here we are. Well, it started that way, but then you turned yeah. into art. Thank you. I, I mean, like Lady Gaga said, like my whole life is a performance. And in a way, I feel like it's more honest. I think we're all performing, I invented though. invented it. Well, I say that if reality is subjective, right. it's more honest to be close to subjectivity. Oh, whoa. Just Hold like- on. I have ADHD, girl. I need to think about that really quickly. <laughs> Be, what I'm saying is creating a character in today's day and age is like more honest. We're all creating characters. We're all performers. Every day. We, we all code switch. I'm different around the bros than with the girls. We do code switch. But the diva's still inside. The diva's there. Hell yeah. The diva shines through. Oh, I mean, stop. the fact I love watching that video because I just like you just couldn't contain yourself. Thank you so much. I mean, honestly, it's because of my parents that I've always been like allowed to be who I am. Oh, your parents really open minded? Oh, my God. Open minded doesn't even cut it. I mean, I came out at the age of 14. So like the same year that that viral moment happened, Mm -hmm. which, by the way, we should probably talk about the viral moment really quickly before we go into the sidetrack. So it was just for people don't know, I was dancing in the back of a news camera and forever to this day, that stink face follows me around. Does it follow you? Because when I met Hell you, yeah. I didn't put that together. Well, and the weird thing is like the heterosexual world has picked it up. <laughs> like it first start, it first started with the gay world, you know, like the drag world picked it up. But mm-hmm. then now like straight people and a lot of rap artists pick that picture, rap take artists. that picture and say, like, if the song isn't making you make this face, then the beat isn't fire. I love like that. that. Well, I, I feel like that's actually the natural progression of that. Right. And there's just like a little fruitcake inside of the meme. Me. You <laughs> a know? Little, a yeah. little fruitcake. Fruitcake, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's the nicest word I, I can does, say. So does it still, like, circulate? Oh, my God. I was on Hollywood Boulevard the other day. Or, sorry, not the other day. The other year. And this man had it tattooed on his thigh. My face is on some man's thigh. Mom, on, my face is on some man's thigh. And for some reason, I had a mutual friend who started to date this man. So she would say every time that they would have sex, she would see my face staring at her. So you got tattooed on a straight man's thigh. I mean, I don't know if he's straight. Everything, it's just I kind of ambiguous. Okay. Well, just, that's very interesting. I am very... I have this theory that everyone in the world is pansexual. Me they too. just don't really know it yet. Because we're all souls at the end of the day. I, I, right? Yeah. <laughs> I think it's Puritan culture that made us like be so oh, gosh. unhonest with ourselves. That's a whole I, other conversation. That's a whole other conversation. But back to my parents. Let's talk about your, your open-minded parents. Yeah. I mean, I came out at the age of 14. My parents knew something was wrong when I was locking myself up in my room and listening to um, like pop icons. Like, you know what I mean? I was listening to Katy Perry, Lady Gaga, Madonna, Britney Spears, but locking myself in my room and... They just asked me one day. They sat me down at a sushi. They sat me down at a sushi restaurant, which isn't that like the most gay thing you've ever heard of in your life? To it's come all. Out? It's all very gay. I know. I was like, eat, <laughs> I was like shoving salmon in my mouth and yeah. saying, "Yeah, m- you know what I mean." Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> I didn't say that word exactly. Are you not allowed to say it? I can't say it. It's not like some me saying. People bad. See, let me say. Well, I've had I, my I journey. Can't, I can't give you permission. Okay, I, I'm giving myself. You, you I feel like you could give yourself permission. <laughs> Hell yeah! Is that not how that works? I think that's exactly how I, it works. We're allowed to say <laughs> that used to be a derogatory. <laughs> used to be really derogatory. I mean, some and now people, we're in America. In people costumes. still don't really like it that much. Well, I always it's liked it because I like things that that make people uncomfortable. But now Me it's too. now people are literally being dressing up as a <laughs> Halloween. What the serving <laughs> made. Do you see those costumes? No, but I missed out. Yeah, well, next year. Oh, I'm going to be a but serving maid. What are you for Halloween? A serving 
Wait, ma'am. Yeah, Trick or treat. the words being, I, I, I miss when it had its edge. But anyway, you come out to your parents at a sushi yeah. restaurant naturally. Yeah, and then my dad and my mom were just like immediately like, "That's fine." They're like, "We found the Lady Gaga record, sweetheart." Yeah, I mean, they would have rather had me grow old and like be gay than like me be hanging from a ceiling fan. You know what I mean? Like that's, that's fair. A true love, right yeah. there. They didn't say that, but that's basically what this the the message was. And honestly, they were so supportive from that day on, which is crazy because my dad was born and raised in Peru. Mm -hmm. And so like he has that like Catholic orthodoxy background. I don't know. I was baptized Catholic. Isn't that fierce? Okay. Yeah. Anyway. It's all very gay. Yeah, right. I know. (laughs) Catholic is gay too. We can get into that. The Pope is the bottom. He's just going to have a gay story. Yeah, no, yeah. it's very like it's very theatrical Catholicism. It's very witchy in a way. I mm-hmm. think so. No, I think it's um speaking of serving I like I just got back Spe- speaking so, of serving so, Catholic. Uh, you know, Catholicism. I just got back from Rome and I was like, ooh. What did you do in Rome? I went to the Vatican naturally. Oh my god. You know what? I see the Pope. I didn't know that the Vatican was in Rome, but honestly, I never been to Europe. I was in the Vatican. Oh, my God. I didn't know it was in Rome. Well, I knew, but I, I didn't hit me until I was literally, we had a private tour, and I was in the Vatican, and I was you like- had a private tour in the Vatican? Yeah. What did you do to get that? You you pay money. Right. It's not like, it's not like I got see, to see the yeah. secret society. I didn't, okay. Like, I didn't get to do a ritual or anything. I tried, but I just got like someone, we, yeah. the private tour that was do, taking us all around the city, and then the next thing I knew, I was in the Vatican, and I was like, oh. Oh, that's very- I'm really f- in this- I'm from Las Vegas. I feel like I've like toured the world already just from going on this trip. Like we have Paris there. We have New York. Yeah. We have Caesar's Palace. So that's kind of like a Rome it's fantasy. It's the same thing. Yeah. No, I saw the Sistine or uh, what's it called? The, the 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 famous fountain there. I'm forgetting the name. Oh, the. But the, I was like, why the copy? The one that Lizzie McGuire threw her the little Lizzie penny McGuire in. Lizzie McGuire I think that's yeah. the technical term. I was like, why did they copy Vegas? The Trevi? The Trevi. The Trevi. Oh my God, okay, culture. God, God, I don't know how much I to me, girl. We I don't even have my bands in me right now. Oh, do you? I don't have it in me right now. Oh, you don't it's have it backordered. In you? Yeah, let's you talk have to the government you? about that. No, I wish. Um, I can't. I can't do things do like you? my bands. No. Oh, okay. Uh, but I should just for the profit margins. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> this should we're joking out. for legal purposes. We are literally joking. Yeah. I'm a sober little queen. Oh, well, I prescribed it, ma'am. Well, yes, I know. But the thing about Vyvanse. <laughs> You're like, you druggy. <laughs> drug addict over here. Vyvanse made me want to drink, so that's why I can't do it. Really? Whenever I take it, I'd be like, what time is that? Oh, Vyvanse wants to make, Vyvanse makes me want to be like a tech owner or like work in San Francisco and Maybe like own a company or something. On me. My Capricorn placements do that. Oh, see, I don't even know what that means. I'm a Libra. You probably have a life. Oh, you're, li- you're you are such a Libra. Am I really? You really are. Oh God! You're the most Libra, Libra. What does that mean? It's just you know, it, you just it's you. I, Libras are always really pretty. Really? Yes. Oh, okay. I was just gonna ask. Am I am I ugly? Am I gonna die? Like, what's going on? Libras are never ugly. Oh, thank God. No. Well, Kim Kardashian's a Libra, and she's sexy as hell. Well, that's the only other Libra I really know. Would I lie to you? I don't know. I wouldn't. I don't know that yet. No, I, would, I wouldn't <laughs> lie about it. second I time lie hanging about out, MJ. Um, what were we talking about? We were talking about your parents being very open-minded. Yeah. I mean, my dad, like, he, he, I told my dad, I was like, you know, because I'm growing, like, Latino hair mm-hmm. in, like, seventh grade, eighth grade. I'm looking like a beast, really. And I had to wear shorts at school because it was hot. And I asked him, I'm like, dad, I really would like to shave my legs right now. And he was so supportive. He's like, okay, we'll, we'll buy your razors. He had to get me those Gillette razors, girl, because like I said, it was giving mountain man. Those legs were crazy. <laughs> and he helped me shave my legs. I know that sounds insane, but my stepmom was helping me there, too. It doesn't sound insane. That kind of support should be Yeah. I mean, same. talk about grooming, girl. We were literally grooming. He was grooming you. Yeah, we Your were dad lit- groomed you. Yeah, my father groomed me in the wow. bathtub by helping me shave my legs. You're so brave. He didn't shave my legs for me, though, I will say. He definitely was like, you know, with my stepmom, they were like, okay, you need to do this motion and don't do that because you're going to cut yourself. And I'm yeah. like, what if I wanted to? But, you know, and I shaved my legs and I went to the next day uh, looking like a naked mole rat. But I was fabulous, girl. I love Those that. Those nights were fierce. I love oh, that. Oh, hell yeah. And just ever since. I just feel, I remember that first night when I had my legs shaved. Feel, getting in bed and in like the rubbing them bed. Mm, I felt feeling. like a 1920s movie star. That is what it feels like. I did, like in my silk, even though I probably had some cotton TJ Maxx. 
I feel like the 1920s movie star, that's really like your, that, that is your, where you shine. I feel like that is your, um, Thank you. I don't know how to, I don't know what are the words I'm looking for. But. No, I love that. I mean, I'm obsessed with antiques. Mm-hmm. Like if I could just live in like some grandma's attic, I would be so happy with that. Honestly. I really feel that. Even if there were rats, like yeah. I find rats cute in mice, yeah. as long as they don't get in bed with me, girl. That's not that cute. No. You know what I mean? No. Not the not the rodent kind. No, 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 no. But like, you know, like the the ones that sing to you? Yeah. Like Cinderella? Yeah. Like I would love to sing so to a little like rat. like a nineteen twenty Cinderella. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Honey. I relate to that a lot. Well, I... having like the grinder come over. Yeah. You know? Yeah, like and, and having like the little frilly pillows. And... Oh, don't worry about the rat, baby. Those are my friends. Yeah. <laughs> get, in, get in grandma's bed. Oh, hell no. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah my parents are really accepting <laughs> i love that i love, I love this that conversation not always the case as i'm sure you know but that's yeah. uh, that, honestly i think that makes a big that makes like all the difference honestly yeah like you can definitely tell when when queer youth have supportive parents because there's just like this airness to them and they're more expressive and allowed to be themselves, which the whole thing that's going on in the country right now, girl, I mean, I'm not going to try to be a politician in my statements, but I just feel it's very ridiculous because everything that I did when I was like 14, 15, 16, like was not a choice of my parents. It was just them allowing me to be myself within reason, obviously, with what was age appropriate. But it was everything I was doing in private. But Mm -hmm. I was just able to share it with them, Mm -hmm. you know, and not have to feel like I have to hide myself or learn that learn the message that what I'm doing is intrinsically shameful, Mm -hmm. which literally heals so many traumas in itself. Mm -hmm. So I think that's why you should just let your kids be what you want. And it's so silly because at the end of the day, it's just fabric. Like if your kid wants to wear a dress and like he was born male, let him wear a goddamn dress, girl. It's I, fabric. I just think it's interesting that that's the hill that people want to die on because the same people who who are concerned about things like that, they don't give a fuck that America has one of the leading rates in childhood poverty. They don't care. Like they, they I don't even know that. Girl, they don't. So. <laughs> they, you know, they don't care about impoverished kids. They don't care about um, kids who you can't afford their lunches at school. They don't mm-hmm. care about paying teachers adequately so that the children get a proper education. They don't care how low we rank in education in this country. They only care about whether or not boys wear dresses. And what's on the line for that? Is yeah. people losing their lives? Oh, absolutely. You know, like if I could not be myself, I would not want to be alive. Why would like it's just and the same can go for all of us, even cis head people. Hell like they're, yeah. you know, like that's that's the essence of life. Like why wouldn't that be the case? Absolutely. I mean, I just think like like on our on our time in this earth, we just gotta we just gotta do us. You know what I mean? You Whatever feels right. You. I know this sounds so stupid, but like if. If I, I wanted to wear dresses all my life since I was like three, two years old. You know, I was so jealous of my sister's childhood because she would get the Barbies and she yeah. and I would secretly ask. I would say, oh, we should get this for my sister because I wanted the doll set girl. We would be at Toys R Us and be like, oh, we should get that for Haley. Yeah. Yeah, like you love your sister so yeah, much. Yeah, yeah. My mama saw right through it. She was like, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For you. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I was the kid that loved to get those toys that, like the cleaning toys, like to play house. Like mm-hmm. I wanted to be a little housewife. Like I was a trad wife before it was ever popular. Don't get it <laughs> twisted. I wanted a little vacuum. I wanted to pretend like I was cooking, waiting for my husband to come home from his corporate job. <laughs> yeah. Having his you're little You're so whiskey. 1920s. You're taking it the whole, you're doing the whole thing. Uh, oh, that could be perceived wrongly, but I just like the fantasy. I yeah. am a little 1920s doll. Oh, I love I love you being a 1920s doll. I love I love women who want to be housewives and who want to do the whole thing. Like trad wife with a little. I'm with trad wife. <laughs> you know, trad wife with so, some low hanging balls, girl. You know, yes, so, so trad in some ways. Yeah, maybe not trad in other ways. Trans wife. Trans trad wife. Trans. That's your podcast. Trad wi- Oh my god, I should start a whole <laughs> series. I should start an entire series. You should. I'd watch. Where it. I'm just cooking recipes. I like the um the dichotomy. We learned that word. Oh today. yeah, we just of learned that. this fancy word. We just, we just googled it. But uh, the dichotomy of of like you making videos, being a housewife, being a trans housewife. Because it's like 
I'm t- I would never realistically want to be a housewife. I've, really? I, no. <laughs> I would want to cry. <laughs> if I was a housewife, I mean, I like I want to make my own money. And mm. not that housewives don't make their own money because, you know, I don't know. But then they got two jobs. They never not work. It's like, baby, I don't want to be trapped in a kitchen. I was just cooking hamburgers last night and I ended up throwing all 10 of them away because I ruined them. Like, I can't even cook a burger. Okay. Don't trust me with baking because baking at that point is a whole other science. You're not Nara Smith. I guess you're not on TikTok. Do you know Nara Smith? Is that the the blonde trad wife who's no, like, I no. submit to my husband. The Bible says that that's what we need to do. <laughs> no, but that's amazing as well. She's not quite like that, but she's like, this morning my children wanted cereal. So I got oh, to work she's, hand creating cereal. She's, she's Lucky Blue's wife? Yes. Okay. I love her. But I, I, think I have nothing against housewives or no. trad wives or anything like that. But just don't, don't, don't knock feminism. Don't blame other women for not wanting that oh, lifestyle. Is that what she's doing? No, she's not doing that. But oh, I'm okay. saying, like, I'm sure the blonde girl that you mentioned is probably. I mean, look, I agree with you that everyone should just live whatever life that they want to live as long as they're not harming You're anyone. Yeah, yeah, live, live your truth, baby. Yeah. yeah. But at the end of the day, um, I just. I am very intrigued <laughs> by the desire to be like, if you're making cookie crisps from scratch, what is going on? It's kind of slay. I don't know. No, it I... is slay, but at the same time, it's also like, oh my God, girl, <laughs> I would get bored. See that she clearly does not have ADHD. Yeah. I would quit halfway through. Some people and buy the cocoa puffs. You know, I I think that I envy people who who maybe don't need that much stimulation, who can maybe just make their cocoa puffs, maybe and yeah. go and shopping sing to the birds. and sing to the birds, and that's it. I I envy yeah. such simplicity of life. I like her voice, though. I love her voice. Yeah, I like her voice. I love envy. I love I love that she's so unbothered. She's like, I'm gonna make these pop tarts from scratch, and you can go. F- so. I honestly like that she bothers people with the cookie. And crisps. I like that she bothers people. It's like without yes, even girl, meaning to. You... She's like, let me let me do the most, and people are like, how f-ing dare you? It's people like, are having an uproar over her bagels am I doing on too TikTok. Much? Are you girl? not doing enough, girl? It like, is you know what I mean? Fierce, diva. I'm over here buying Sarah Lee, and she is here making like stirring the batter, diva, rising mm-hmm. the yeast, yeah, making no. it from scratch. Everyone on Uber Eats team knows me at this point. Oh, girl, yeah. everyone at the they McDonald's drive through like, hey. knows me. <laughs> Oh, actually, don't say that. I just learned yesterday you that we're supposed McDonald's. to be boycotting it. I, I'm i terrible because I really don't look at the internet as much as I should be for, like, current event stuff. You better be. I know. I should you be. I just be. don't know who we're boycotting. And I need to just get... Just assume it's everyone. Just drink water. Out of a out of a. I mean, stream. I went. I accidentally had Chick Fil A one time. I'll totally, I'll totally say that. But I feel like you're allowed maybe to do three that times. It's like a self hatred thing. <laughs> I've maybe had Chick Fil A five times. You I know, know. I'm very sorry. You know, <laughs> if you if listen, I can't believe I'm the, admitting that. Like okay. that is such a that's such a PR fail for me to admit that I like fully is your PR love. team here. Let's I don't have in the room. one girl. Hence why I'm talking about me eating Chick Fil A. Hey, okay. live your truth. I'm just like okay. Do you have an iPhone? Yes. So do I. Okay. That's problematic. Why? Because because literally it's slave labor in like making these and there's lithium and there's all kinds of things. Like it's very hard to engage with anything oh, that's die. not problematic. I'm going to die. I should uh, which just... I'm not saying that we shouldn't try, but it's yeah. it's hard. I I think that this too, is a really good we conversation. Turn, we turn against each other and be like how dare you shop at Starbucks? Yeah. And it's like let's keep our attention on Starbucks. Yeah. Have you burned down a Starbucks today? No, but we probably should. What's well, <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of fucking Starbucks to begin with. They don't need that many stores, girl. On every corner, really? Like, let's put in, I don't know, a Goodwill or Listen, something. That's, that's, oh, I know. And see, Goodwill. Market, Is it Goodwill baby. bad right now? I don't Is know. Is Goodwill bad? I don't know. You know, I think it's just good to be friend. I'm really showing woman. my privilege right now, which I do apologize, but at the same time, it's reeking off of I'm you. I'm just, honey, it, it's it's this body spray I got at Target. That's is, what you're is it smelling. privilege by Ariana Grande? It's, it's a privilege. <laughs> wood musk. It smells so good from though. Ariana. Oh, Ariana. What, are you to do? what does she make? She makes fragrances for Target. No, um, I she makes. We're fragrances. going off on a tangent, right? Now. I, we're covering so much. I know. Wait, okay. What topics do we need to be talking about right now? I'm glad we steered away from the burning down of the Starbucks because I'm already on a watch list. From burning down Starbucks? Just from the my overall rhetoric. Have you been arrested? Yeah. 
Really? Not for that. Oh, did you get a mugshot? Yeah. I'm pr- I'm pretty sure I finally got a scrub from the internet. Did you like I was crying. Get a copy of this mugshot? <laughs> I any I've had so many moments in my youth, my youth that yeah, I, I know scrubbed. I was like or, how old are you girl? <laughs> I'm 47. Um but that I've scrubbed from I know I look great, right? You're not 47, right? No, now. I'm not. Oh my god! Oh, that's a no, I'm not. But I say girl. that so people are like, "Oh my god, you look so good." I was like, I, well, I couldn't tell because people in Los Excuse Angeles. Me? One more time, you couldn't tell. I just couldn't tell because people in Los Angeles, like, they'll be fifty looking twenty. I'm very serious. Interesting. Uh, that's not a read to you, diva. No, no, it's you do look young. That's why I was gagged. If you said you were forty-seven. Yeah. Anyway, enough <laughs> this is compl- going weird. Enough compliments for me. Um, yes, I have been arrested. It was for shoplifting. Uh, okay, but that's a whole other story. I mean. You know, we've all been there. Sometimes you just got to swipe a little. I took an Alexander McQueen skull scarf. Holy shit, girl. I'm talking about like from Walmart or something, not designer. <laughs> they said, you kind of took a lot. And I was like, kind well, of. I'm here. Yeah. I drove here. <laughs> like, Ooh, baby. <laughs> Are you a label whore? Um, I see you have Mew Mews on. So I'm saying yes. Can you see the Chanel earrings? Um, no, see, I wouldn't think so. I wouldn't even know if they're Chanel. To be a girl, I got this at Crossroads. No, I do I that too. I need to be better at being a designer girl. Like, I, do I too. appreciate designer. I don't, I don't buy it. I wouldn't spend my own money on it, but I buy. I spend my own money at Crossroads. Well, I need to, I need to go <laughs> submit an application to no, your we'll buyers. Talk, we'll <laughs> I think we need to talk about you being thrust. This is a, something I'm interested in. You being thrust into the spotlight because at the end of the day, God chose you and mm-hmm. was like, you will have your moment. And then since then, from my understanding, you have just, you kind of, once you went viral, you've just always had a social media presence. Yeah. And before I say, I am for ceasefire, okay? Anyways. Ceasefire. So, social media presence. What are we talking totally about? Totally unjoking aside. Totally joking aside. Um, social media presence. So you kind of were, it's not like you were like me and you're like a little attention whore every mm-hmm. day on the internet. Like you kind of, it wasn't really chosen for you. I guess that is true, yeah. It is. So it, what was that like? I mean, it's weird because, I'm going to be totally frank with you, like, I was five years old and telling everyone I wanted to be a star, like, for no reason. Like, you manifested Like, it, it may be um, trauma I haven't worked through yet that I want attention from people, but, like, let's be honest, like, attention feels good. We all have. I just, but I just, I wanted to be a star for the reason of getting, like, because I knew I had something to say. I think we all have something to say. I think everyone, everyone can be a star. So it's like the people who like bag on people for ever wanting that in life. It's something weird because it's like, we're like, 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 we're all superstars. Lady Gaga once said that once. Or did you love Lady Gaga like me? I worshipped Lady Gaga. She raised me. And I think that's one of the reasons why I started owning that like inner superstar. She definitely taught something around the born this way monster ball era Mm -hmm. that everyone has an inner star in them and we all have the power to pull it out you just have to choose it Mm -hmm. and being a star doesn't necessarily mean like you know a tabloid girl a tabloid diva you're like getting shot um taking pictures at craig's whatever the fuck it can just mean being a star of who you are in your own life you know it's just Just being yourself being living in your truth that's what i think being a star is not only living your truth owning your truth like there's a difference between just like accepting and just walking through the door with that like essence around you and owning it like you can be at ralph's and feel like a fucking star 100 percent. you can be at ralph's and like open or the you know that's a grocery store you can be at the grocery store and feeling like you're opening up the, uh, I don't know, arena tour, whatever, whatever is that for you. Yeah. You know, the same feeling. It's all just about the feeling of being a star. Yeah. That carries you on through life. And people really don't like it. And I, I, I've always been perplexed by that, too, because it's like in terms of like being like a celebrity, it's not for to think that celebrities have an easy go at it or people who are popular in social media. Like mm-hmm. there's so much drawback. But yeah. for some people, it's just what they're meant for. Yeah, I agree with that. And I also just think everything, anything in life has a drawback. Mm-hmm. There is not one 100% positive thing in life. That's yeah. literally impossible to find. Like, there's drawback to working a nine to five. There's drawback to working like gigs and, you know, being like a movie star or whatever, whatever you do. You know what I mean? Like, like whatever you do in your life, there's always just going to be something that isn't perfect. 
But yeah. to chase perfection is literally to chase death because nothing can honestly be perfect without death. <gasps> that was kind of fierce of me to say. That yeah. was really fair. Death is perfect because it's it's honest. Death is honest. It all happens to us. And inevitable. I'm really just talking out of my ass right now, aren't I? Yeah. Uh, no, no, you're not. But like, it's. Not. All, I think no, I'm being I, for I, real. No, I'm agreeing with you. No, I think you're very real. I think that that's. I don't very sound profound. stupid. No, it's very profound and okay, very. Okay, I always have to check in. And I think it's like, I always I say it's it's in. important to remember that death is inevitable, and I think a lot of people don't want to remember that. Hell but it's yeah. like you got to live your life like fuck these bitches. I mean. There are so many times when I just sit on my couch and I'm just like, oh my God, like, what am I doing in my life? I still don't even know what I'm doing in my life, you know? I think you're killing it. Like, I'm a social media whore. I post all the time. Like, I don't even have a specific agenda with my social media. Sometimes I write up, like, silly little fucking videos to, to like, you know. Well, I love it. I, that's why I say I think post. you're very postmodern because you have, like, even though it's, like, social media driven, it's very artistic. It's Thank just very you. honest and funny and, like, it's so multifaceted that... That's what I think. I mean, I like artists. to lead with a message too. Like there was one video I posted that was completely switching the narrative on what like the hetero world, the cis hetero world says about like anything queer related. Mm -hmm. And I was literally just saying it using the cis hetero term in place of like, oh, the gays are groomers or trans I are saw groomers. that and like, I really liked it. Heterosexual people are groomers like because they forced and me into a church are. when I was young. I mean- that word is so silly because you can literally use it for anything. I think we've it's lost its meaning. Like a lot of things. Of what really is intentional grooming. But I like to do things like that where we can flip a narrative and literally like show a mirror to people. And I and then sometimes I like to talk about eating bouillon cubes in my kitchen. You know, like it's really just all over the place. Can you tell I need well, that's a job? What makes it so honest. <laughs> You have a job, honey. Can you tell I need a job? You're, you're, are, are you not? You you should be getting paid for your art. Are you not? I I I get paid. Okay. I get paid. You I just I honestly I used when I first moved to Los Angeles, I was a receptionist slash an assistant to um, a doctor in Beverly Hills, an aesthetics doctor. Because I honestly, I really just I wanted a day job because social media is not real for me mm -hmm. and. You know, I wasn't even making that much money from it at the time. So I was like, I actually did need a job. And honestly, that was the best thing that ever happened to me. Honestly, having a job because it gave me a schedule. It gave me a purpose. I was so depressed at the time, which a lot of people view like, oh, going into work, like I feel purposeless. But I got to talk to people. I got to, you know, be a real human. Mm -hmm. I got to work under someone and I got to realize like, you know, the world isn't like making like a couple thousand on like a brand deal or something is not the norm. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And it's, it's a huge blessing and a privilege that I'm very grateful, you know, when that comes in. But, um, it's weird because without like having something to wake up to on a day to day, I, and I don't like to make my own schedules. It's just, life just feels weird. You know? Yeah. yeah I think, I think, yeah. You feel purposeless in a way. Yeah. I think we're all different. I think that yeah. that's, that's very, very valid. And for that's, me, that was it for me, at least. Having a job gave me anxiety. I'm really? Like, yeah, being like, you have to be here at 9 a.m. I'd be like, Ugh. Yeah, I mean, baby, trust me, I was definitely not always on time. Yeah. You know, but even if I was 10 minutes late, I like, you know. Because I could just, I could really, like, I don't know if you struggle with, like, depression and, and I things did, like that. I did. I did very. You did? Well, Would you get a lobotomy, girl? Yeah, I did. I got hypnotized. No, I'm sober now. Oh, So I, like, okay. don't hate my life anymore. I, like, I I used to struggle with really bad, I had, I, I mean, if we're going to get into it, I had really bad depression, anxiety, and, and PTSD. Like okay. I would have panic attacks and I would have these panic attacks at work. Oh, fierce cocktail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I would just be like sobbing at work for no reason. They'd be like, are you like not mentally well? And I'm like, it appears to be so. It's like, no, I'm working a job, baby. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I just hate working. Oh, yeah. That's what it is. And I, but it's, but being able to work on my own schedule has been so, getting sober was really helpful, but yeah. I don't think I could have gotten sober if I was still doing a waitressing job. And that's a privilege that I have. I'm very lucky that I had an opportunity to be like, let me just stare at a wall for, for a while. Yeah. And so that's what I did. So I guess so I did you, get a lobotomy. May I so ask, if did you go off of all the, like, no alcohol, no I'm so glad weed. you asked. I quit like, drinking. What does sober mean? I was, um, I, I was a, a, 
LA model type of drinker. I was like, I just there just happens to be alcohol everywhere I go, and I just drink it. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like and then, free open bar, girl. You're gonna yeah, have. Yeah, I was couple. like, oh, I just always end up at Delilah. It's so crazy how it happens, but okay. for no reason. And then I smoked pot every day, and then I vaped. Oh, she was a stoner. I was a stoner. Yeah, no, I've been there for many years of my life. There's not a chance you had an interaction with me where I wasn't stoned. She like the type of stone where you just wake up and you're like shoving a pipe in your mouth like a hillbilly. I was like brush teeth, smoke joint, baby. I know it was really sad, baby. And then I vaped and I smoked cigarettes. Oh, okay. so I was just rough. I was rough. okay. Which I mean, I, I smoke cigarettes too sometimes. I'm so sorry, Dad. I I, I really am. But we're getting so much out. I know. Eat a Chick Fil A. Smoke cigarettes. Jesus Christ. Um, I doesn't respect the Pope. Can I say this? I haven't had Chick Fil A. And I want to say two years. When was your last cigarette? I have cigarette? been enlightened. My last cigarette, two hours ago. I I'm kidding. <laughs> I, I knew you smelled good. Oh, stop. Yeah, well, I'll be I honest. Cigarettes really help raccoon. with constipation. They do. They help with so much. You drink um, a cigarette and a coffee. They don't help with not getting lung cancer, though. No. <laughs> you can ask Walt Disney that, girl. <laughs> don't ask Walt Disney too much, though. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> I don't know all that lore, girl. Walt well, Disney's canceled, too. Um, is he? Oh, yeah. He's dead. Well, so is John Wayne, and they canceled him. Fierce diva. Well, Not even the grave I'm can protect Disney you. I'm a Disney angel. Um, but, yeah, so I quit all of those things in one day after doing them for many, many years. Oh, so you went cold Thanksgiving turkey. It's so cold. Oh, my God. So okay, cold. So Fresh did from you, the supermarket. Did you feel like you want to die? I just, I gaslit myself into believing I was never... Never addicted. Gaslighting so whenever, yourself. It totally works. That's a new, like, Gaslighting I was yourself like, works. I'm so good at gaslighting other people. I wonder if I can do it internally. Oh, my God. See, I'm terrible at gaslighting other people, but I'm pretty good at gaslighting myself. Like, no, I'm not sad. Everything's fine. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Like, you're not. You're fine. Yeah. Um, no, I was like, whenever I'd have a craving for a cigarette, I'd be like, that's so crazy because you, like, never smoked before. So I don't know what that feeling is. But oh, that's, like, witchy. No, it was like, yeah. That's, that's almost. Thing. That's almost, like hypnosis yeah that's why when you're like did you get a lobotomy i was like kind of yeah you kind of gave yourself you shoved that ice pick up your own eyeball girl i did yeah i've been yeah. better off for it ever since she's a girl boss she'll then, do her own lobotomy honey yeah like a true yeah. girl boss yeah 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 <laughs> yeah take a take a master course um and then i got a pomeranian and then like the anxiety was gone <laughs> And then a the Pomeranian and your life will be figured out. You'll go sober. Listen you'll get a free lobotomy. Sober up. Get a Pomeranian. Grow up. Yeah. Sober up. It's not that hard. Get a Pomeranian and go to the Vatican. And 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 go, take your ass to Rome. Yeah. And throw a coin in the Lizzie McGuire fountain and get over what, yourself. What airline did you fly to get to Rome? Uh, like, does Southwest fly there? Who flies there? Southwest. No. Um, really? I think it was, oh. I flew Air France to France it and haunts. then connected yeah. Oh my God. And how long of a flight is it to Rome? Good golly. I think it was like 12 hours. I don't know. I just turn on Valium. Mean Girls and Valium. I'm sobriety. Valium. I know, but 12 hours. Whenever the plane goes in turbulence, I'm like, if this plane starts going down, I will be drinking. Oh, I love Valium. I mean, <laughs> I love turbulence. No, we get that. <laughs> I have never had Valium in my life, by the way. The only reason why I Courtney say that <laughs> is because everyone tells me to do that on a long distance flight. Is Valium? Yes. I took, I took Valium once and watched a, a movie and woke up. I was did not remember any of that Get movie. it prescribed, everyone. Don't get things off the street. Or, Come or, on now. Or hit me up. Don't Please don't take business away from small business owners. Oh, are so you, you're a small rude. business owner like that? No, drug dealers are. Oh. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh. What, is there, what, you know, I feel like we've we've covered a lot of offensive things. I know. I am sorry, Mom. I am sorry, Grandma. Do you think your mom and dad will watch this? Do they watch everything yeah. you do? Yeah. I don't think my dad knows I occasionally have a, f- my, a cigarette in my mouth. But... Homophobic. I'm quitting when I'm 25. I told myself that. Yeah. <laughs> at least, at least do it. You see how I keep I'm having to take like, deep okay, breaths because not, I ruin my lungs. Don't do that. I'm not chain smoking. It's just one every, like you know, three, one to two every three months kind of thing. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think that's fine. If I could do that, I would do that. The, th- the problem is, is once I started drinking, it was when I was like, bring two. These are terrible. Life. Are we being a bad influence? Like, no, I I got a pomeranian. And I'm are sober. we being a bad influence, or are we just being real? We're being real. Because I will say this: the I don't pit. endorse cigarettes. I think they're terrible. I don't, th- for I don't you. either. I I I think no. I think this is a good balance of of of. I don't think the kids are going to start smoking from this. And I don't Thank think they're going to start eating Chick-fil-A either. Well, because you remember anti, I feel like smoking campaigns were so good in the 2000s. And all of a sudden, Gen Z just picked it right back up again. They're like, no, we want to look cool. Yeah, we want to smoke a fat well, and a gay honestly, uh, cigarette. I Jesus, I need to stop saying that slur. <laughs> I think, I think Gen Z doesn't. I think Gen Z is kind of on the page. As my little nephew, me and my sister were little little vape twins. And her son. Okay. Her son always hated it and was like, you guys are so, you guys look like morons with your little candy vape. You're literally full ass fucking do look grown like adults. Binkies. One of you who has a kid, you know what I mean? Like you just grow up. They look like binkies, girl. They look like binkies. And that was so fierce about them. But he's like, so like, no, I will mm-hmm. never touch a vape. I will never touch a cigarette. You know what? I've actually even heard that vapes are a little worse than cigarettes. I, just because there's so many chemical, chemical compounds, I guess that they haven't fully seen long term yet. I don't know. I'm not a doctor. I need to I shut up that, about I think this. that they're bad in their own unique ways. I think yeah. Because oh, yeah. when I had a vape, I would be like podcasting with you right now and be like, right. into the camera. It's not popcorn lung they give you. They give you kettle corn lung. Yeah. That was the stupidest joke I think I've ever made in my life. Oh, my she God. She stand up. No, she really does do stand up secretly. Do you? Yeah, I do stand up. Do you up. really? I don't tell anyone about it. You don't it. record it? Hell no, girl. I've I'm not recording it until to. I'm I go good. to open mics and I get so geek. I can't. The thing with trying anything new is you're going to be shit at it at that, first. I think it's a good exercise for people. So I'm doing stand up. And I'm fully owning that it is not good. I think it's so good for I think it's like I think that like is such a healthy exercise for everybody because stand up to me is the most terrifying thing that you can do. Absolutely. It is terrifying. It's absolutely terrifying. Especially because I go to a lot of stand ups that have like a lot of bros at it. So, you know, sometimes I'll have to go to the cheap jokes like, you know, mm-hmm. talk about my first time topping and things like that. And, mm-hmm. you know, they love those stories because I'm like over here wearing a dress and they never would have known. And then I just whip it out, not on stage, but the oh, story. I was like, oh, that's not. You should get. Oh, that's not not for free. See, honestly, I don't go into detail. I'm pretty sure you have to pay to do it. I mics. do. I do. No, well, actually, no, not some of them. Okay, but I told myself that 2024 was the year that I would conquer my fears. <laughs> I love it for you. I want to do it too. I've gone to open mic yeah. nights and it is, it's true that it's like a lot of bros. It is a lot of bros because they were hitting on me. So it made me feel good, but it also made me feel like I didn't want to. Yeah. You'll get hit on. I was offered to get pizza after the stand up show that I did by this one guy who was horrible at it. Horrible, honey. No offense. I just didn't find it funny, but comedy is subjective. You do have to remember that. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I even tried DJing. This year, which I, I am love. Let I want to wanted... tell you this. I'm really good at it. I don't give a shit. Some things you're just naturally good at. I am really good at it I, because I used to play around with virtual DJ when I was like in fourth, fifth grade. So mm-hmm. I already knew kind of what I was doing. Mm-hmm. I was just reacclimating myself to the artistry. But what, was, what were we going to say? Should we talk about man eaterism? Sure. I think should we just close this to- going to that topic? Yeah, let's talk about man eaterism. So I. That's the name of the podcast, Mm -hmm. as you know. And I could not land on a name for a podcast. And I just thought, I thought that was good. May I ask why you called it Maneater? Because I I wanted something that was easy to remember, that wasn't taken. And that already in itself is a fucking feat. Because everyone and their mother has a podcast. Everyone's a DJ. Everyone's podcasting. Everyone. Everyone's Um, a writer. Everybody. Everyone's a stand-up comedian. Everyone's a stand-up comedian. (laughs) Yes. Um, Where are real men? (laughs) <laughs> bring them back all the men are all, yeah. yes yeah no so we need to be fit we need to, we need to yeah. be audacious and, and fill these <laughs> fill these career fields um, lord have mercy but you know and then i thought it would look good on a billboard you know with me like my and my tits up to my chin oh my and just like mm, man eater biting my lip the, like, are you on a billboard with your tits eater. out right now um not recently oh, okay i was gonna be like when can i watch it not recently
Go Who ahead. let you out of the house, ma'am? Just bravo. Everyone and then in it, Los I Angeles say is sexy, like, period. Maybe one, once every three months I'll see a man and be like, oh, Good for you. Well, I just think it honestly comes to like the societal expectations. Like men can somewhat Absolutely look is. a little dirty and Absolutely get away is. with it. But like you, you will I would you will directly tell a man like, hey, if you wanted to improve your appearance, you could do this very, very simple thing. It maybe take you two minutes a day. It's a simple task. And it would it would improve. Like teeth. And they go, No. Yeah. I'm not gonna do that. I love my men though. I'm not hating men, but it's just I do too. There's definitely They're you know what I mean? There's some unfairness going on there for sure. Yes. I'm not trying to get into so gender studies so right now. <laughs> oh my gosh, I never noticed. Um, gender studies, cigarettes, Chick fil A, and boycotting Starbucks. That's what your first episode is pretty much about. That's awesome. What should we name the episode? Oh dear. Smoking God. cigarettes, eating smoking eating cigarettes and eating with, Chick fil A with the Pope. With a gay icon. Smoking cigarettes with the Pope. <laughs> yeah. Smoking cigarettes, eating Chick-fil-A with the Pope. Brennan's Brennan's thoughts on the Pope. <laughs> okay. If I have thoughts, I think he needs to get a new stylist. No, I, I mean, but fabulous, yeah, you remember but... the puffer he wore? The big puffer coat? No. He was like dripped out in the Montclair? Are you sure? Anyway, you just I'd maybe Never mind. Maybe, I'm just talking out of my. Maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. I the, need to shut up. The Pope. The Pope has his moments. Uh, she, yeah, she does. She's a queen. She's don't a be queen. a drag. Just be a queen. See, the Pope told me. Really? No. During shut our, up. During our kiki. Shut up. Shut <laughs> up. My ass. <laughs> My God, I'm a, I'm global as hell too. So you can't joke around with things. I'm like, what? Really? I love that about you. Oh, because I'm always interested. I'm like, oh, tell me everything. <laughs> I'm a nosy ass. I don't really like to get into drama, but I love to know everything about it. I just love the the, the like, residual. Maybe, yeah. A woman of high society who just likes to sit back and watch. <laughs> watch the world. But don't invite me, please. Smoke just, her just cigarettes and see, yeah. Watch everything. Smoke my burn. cigarette. Eat my Chick Fil A. Oh my God. I and love watch that the you. world burn. I love that about you. I love that you're an unproblematic queen. No, I really, through guys, through. I have not eat. I have not had Chick-fil-A in about like years. Okay. I will be honest. I had it when I first moved to Los Angeles because I had to try it. I've never had it. We'll check the receipts. We will. Don't be. look at my bank statement. <laughs> she but I'll, I'll forge some breakfast. receipts for you, girl. Yes. I know. I just had it this morning. <laughs> I'm kidding. I didn't have it this morning. I haven't eaten today. Yeah. Listen, I think we have worse problems. It's okay. It's okay. We have to worry about the youth getting indoctrinated by... By the gays. Homosexuals. Yeah. Apparently. Oh, yeah. There are bigger things. Bigger fish. There's bigger cry. problems. Like, those homos, they're grooming all the kids right now. <laughs> it's a little crazy. And all these people want to get on Drag Race. How about we start working a corporate job, girl? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm totally kidding. <laughs> oh, my God. That's so funny. You know, I'm literally dressed like a library. <laughs> I am. This is this is office attire. This is you know you're gonna be proud of this. What this is a a Target collaboration mm -hmm. with oh, what's his name? I'm gonna have to find it. Never mind. We're gonna have to cut out that segment because <laughs> I literally like. Do you want to read it? Can you see the tag? See. You need, see. You're gonna be proud of this. Hold on. We're pausing. Oh, honey, I can't pronounce that. His Jesus. name's Isaac. Isaac Mahasari. Isaac Mizrahi. Mizrahi. Okay, so it's a Target collaboration with Isaac Mizrahi. I am wearing designer. Yeah. 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 No, I could tell. Yeah. I could tell it was a Target collaboration mm, with a designer. Yeah. So thank you. For sure, it's giving that. I know. No, you that I so thrifted cute. for fifteen dollars. I love that. <laughs> we'll have to do a crossroads trip together because oh I, my god, we I do. stay in crossroads. Crossroads helps me cross dress, girl. It's been <laughs> the best thing ever. I had. Just homophobia outside, sorry. That's the Vatican coming yeah. for us. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta go. Um, oh my gosh. Yeah, Crossroads does help me cross-dress, though. Absolutely. I did not have a girl wardrobe before I shopped there. No, it's great. Yeah. Yeah. So, did we cover every topic? We I think we to? covered everything. I know these listeners are going to be mortified. No, I think they're going to be thoroughly entertained. Okay, thank God. Yeah, I'm I just, think I think we just scratched this. I think I think we're okay. We, yeah, we're good. Yeah, we got no rage bait, a little cloak bait, but no rage bait. We'll be no, okay. yeah. I don't it even works. know what rage. What rage? What, what rage bait is when you when you say something intentionally provocative so people engage with it. It's what cowards do. Oh, yeah. I wonder if I do that sometimes. Okay, not all of us are chron chronically online, so yeah, it's okay. It's okay. I've been there. There is a flake of mascara in my eye. Do you see me like having a fake stroke right now? It's because I'm like. 
I am having a stroke because of this mascara flake in my eye. I, <laughs> okay, well, we're going to go get you to a medic. Yeah. Thank you so much for being on. <laughs> I'm honored. I honestly did I'm not honored. expect. I didn't expect to like out myself for being a half Chick Fil A. Um, I eater. have that effect on people. You know what? Live it's your just, truth. What am Live I gonna Chick-fil-A do? Chick Fil A eating truth. I can't lie. I I'm the worst liar. You will know if I'm lying. Yeah. You will. Yeah. You will. I don't think anyone asked though. Did they? <laughs> no. No, which, how did we even get in that conversation, girl? We need to turn this episode this off there. now. Okay, now. Well, we I've enjoyed my career thus far. Thank you so much for having me, It's everybody. going to be a beautiful, thriving career. Yeah. Um, thank you so much for being yeah. on. It's been a pleasure. It's been an honor. Gay rights, girl. Trans rights. Gay rights. We're going to fight for this shit. Gay rights. I'll see you at Crossroads. See you at Crossroads. To cross dress. To cross dress, honey. Oh. <laughs>